And then she comes and talks to me like, are you the owner? So then she proceeds to go into my unit because she's mad. I'm like, hey, excuse me. Okay, so I'm running out of command center. Have my massive jug filled with water, dropped it, completely busted, soaked me, and now I'm going into interview. Let's go. Today's Friday, so I had the Anytime Fitness meeting that we have every single week. We got a new office manager starting on Monday. That's awesome. Gonna get trained up over the next few weeks. Let's talk about hiring someone who left your business in the past, because that's what's happening. Um, they went and left, and do you hire them back? I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments. If someone leaves, not under bad circumstances, they don't say anything negative, but do you have them back? What's the requirement? What's the what's the prism that you would look through, the questions you'd be asking? Um, so we're gonna see if we give this person another shot, or is this a matter of like, hey, you left us when we needed you? It was nothing negative. It was just, you left us. Is that just a pride thing that I as an owner would think about, or is that, uh, they're, they're like, that's their right. They can do whatever they want. And if they come back, it's up to me if, if they, th if I think they're a value, like, well, what's the question you ask yourself? And what's the question you ask them when it comes to someone who left you when you kind of needed them and then they want to come back and there was no hard feelings or negativity in the process. Days like this is kind of like one of the most stressful parts of what I do and most business owners have. And that is when you're dealing with multiple situations and each of those situations require different parties to be brought in and communicated with. So when you have multiple mid-level managers, you can't just make calls without bringing people into the equation and getting their opinion, synthesizing that, talking about it with them, uh, working through certain things if you disagree on stuff and then making decisions. And then you gotta like bring different parties in. So for example, with the one situation I just mentioned with the employee that wants to come back, it's like, well, I gotta talk to managers. I need to talk to the team. I need to talk to other managers to get their feedback and bounce things off of them with, so I don't make calls behind someone's back. So sometimes that can get a little much when you're trying to get stuff done. Cause it's like right now there's three of those things happening where different situations completely, different people you're trying to bring in and you're kind of like the, the, the you know control center for all that stuff happening. But that's just business. That's just, you know, every single business owner has that, whether it be in a larger scale or a smaller sale. Uh, another another situation, just a financial thing, like um, someone just needs help with their finances and uh, trying to walk them through the process of scaling. And when you do that, you are running low on cash and you need to have certain steps and you gotta bring other people into the equation. So um, things like that. That's what uh, is pressure sometimes, I guess. So it's actually uh, Friday evening right now, and uh, it's the fifth of the month, which typically means I look back at the previous month at all the financials inside of all the businesses, and it's my time to kind of just take a snapshot of all the companies, and then it's also when I determine profit sharing. So every single one of my businesses, besides the media group, I do some form of profit sharing. Um, and so whether that be the gym, or each of the locations with, that have GMs on them, or the franchise, or command center, or whatever it is, I do all those numbers myself. Now, it probably takes me a couple hours, but that's like my time to lock in on each of the companies and know the numbers really, really well. So even though down the road, like you know, you'd have a finance team doing this sort of thing, it's my like only time to really think about the numbers. I don't think a lot about the defenses, a train, really. I don't think a lot about the defensive measures of the business, like numbers and things like that, but for this maybe couple hours a month. So that's what I'm determining right now, profit sharing for the different companies and uh, just how July went. And uh, yeah, super exciting. <laughs> Man, guys, I wish I would have got this on film. I had my phone in my pocket and I almost was able to get it out and get some video, but I wasn't able to catch it. But this is what happened. So I own these 10 unit, a 10 unit apartment complex, but the neighbor next door has always complained about our floodlights going into her bedroom window. So we actually put on the light, we had our handyman go up like 30 foot pole and put this shade so it doesn't, it doesn't shine towards her side of the property. Well, then now she's complaining about these motion detecting lights that are on each each of the property's uh, front doors to prevent theft, etc. So we used to have problems with people breaking into their cars and stuff like that. So we put these motion detecting lights, they're really bright LEDs, right? And though now she's complaining about those. So she comes over, she's walking her dog and her husband and they're walking by and Liz is there because they're she was cleaning the Airbnbs and you know, neighbor comes strutting over and is like, hey, are you the property manager? And then she comes and talks to me like, are you the owner? And I was like, no, I'm just one of the tenants because I do live there. So I'm like, I'm one of the tenants here. And uh, so I was to take it back. She asked, are you the owner? I said, I'm one of the tenants because I am one of the tenants. I didn't say I was not the owner. Anyways, so then she proceeds to go into my unit because she's mad. She's like, I'm going, she, she, she goes inside my unit. I'm like, hey, excuse me. Like having lights on your property is not a felony. 
or any sort of issue legally, but you can have legal recourse for trespassing and walking into somebody's house. So I, I so wish I would've got my camera out and filmed it. Um, she was all mad. I was like, seriously, lady, get a life. Like just, we literally tried to fix the floodlight issue. And if you have an issue with the other lights, let us know. But she's been like calling command center, demanding to talk to Liz, cause she knows that she's the property manager. And it's just like, seriously, lady, catch a life. So this is what's called a quit claim deed. And basically what you do is you're putting property from your personal name into an LLC. So what you have to do is file this with an auditor's office as well as the treasurer's office. So that first part is the auditor. This part is for real estate excise tax. There is, it's just a mere, what's called a mere change in identity. So essentially there is no taxable event here. I'm simply changing it from my personal name into my LLC. So that's what this document's all about. And I got to follow this with the appropriate offices. It's pretty late at night here, but I was just watching this video of Dave Ramsey. I want to take, I want you to go ahead and take a look at it. It's like a minute long. It was titled like the shortest Dave Ramsey call-in show ever. But I actually think it's fundamentally flawed for most small business owners, entrepreneurs, and people who actually want to build a lot of wealth. Uh, and it's really built for just someone who is in the middle class or lower middle class, and someone who's never going to really double down on growing to become a millionaire or beyond. So let me go ahead and let you watch this, the whole clip, which is a minute, and then. Uh, let me get my take on it. I have a, a mortgage just about ready to pay it off. Good. But I'm a real estate agent. And you know, with a real estate agent, you got to kind of go get it. And I love going to get it, but it's a big chunk. So Thank what do you owe on it? Oh, 95. How much cash do you have? Two eleven. Good Lord. Pay it off today. Pay it off. What are you doing? <laughs> pay it off today. Okay, so I want to break this down because I actually think this is completely wrong information. If you are a small business owner or an entrepreneur, if you are the average person that is putting a couple thousand dollars away every year and you are plugging away at your mortgage for 30 years, et cetera, probably good advice. If you are an entrepreneur and over the next 10, 15 years, you want to become a millionaire, you want to have multiple streams of income, multiple businesses, and generate a massive amount of wealth, this is the wrong information. So let me give you the numbers, okay? So $96,000 in debt, okay? Let's assume that this person got a refinance just within the past couple of years and could have easily gotten 3% or 2.5% on their mortgage. That's very, very possible. And so if you run, let's just assume it's $100,000. Let's assume they're at like a 2.5% interest rate. So if you do the math on that, that's like, it's basically going to be $2,400 a year in interest. So that's $200 a month in interest that they're going to be paying. Okay. That is the cost of this extra debt they have is $200 a month. Okay. Theoretically, if you can pay your interest and some, you should go invest the money instead of paying off any debt. If you have 30 year fixed debt on your mortgage and you recently in the past couple of years got a mortgage for two and a half, three, three and a half percent, I would highly recommend when inflation is at eight, nine, 10% that you do not pay off that debt. Your your interest is less than the rate of inflation. So that's a dumb move. Here's why. $200 per month, okay, is what you're paying in interest. Now, what if you took that $211,000 and instead of going and paying off debt that you're paying $200 a month on interest, go put that towards a real estate deal where you're going to put 20% down, you're gonna buy a property that's worth a million dollars. You have $211,000. You're gonna go buy a property that's for a million. You're not gonna have to pay property mortgage insurance. You're gonna get a conventional loan because it's a four unit apartment complex or a fourplex. So you can get a 30 year fixed mortgage. I truly believe you can absolutely cash flow a thousand to $1,500 a month from day one. And furthermore, in a couple years, you're probably gonna be making two or $3,000 a month in rental income in addition to the the mortgage that you're paying on this fourplex, okay? So now, instead of saving yourself $200 a month on interest by paying off this loan, you've gone and now bought an asset that in a couple of years, you're probably literally gonna make a couple thousand dollars in monthly income, and it's an asset that goes up in value because guess what? Your loan doesn't go up in value. It just stays the same. It constantly goes down as you pay it off. So why would I pay that off if it's fixed two and a half, three percent 3% interest rate if I can go get $2,000 a month or even $1,000 a month in income, rental income, in an excess of a mortgage that I'm paying on that fourplex, that is how you build wealth. Because now that fourplex goes up in value, my rents go up, and my cash flow improves. So um, I think it's bad advice by Dave for a small business or an entrepreneur. 
it's probably a good thing if someone struggles with saving and struggles with investing. But if this person has $211,000, I don't think they fall into that category. And this person should be investing their money, assuming that they have 30 year fixed. Like real estate debt is fantastic debt. If you have any debt right now and you're paying under 5%, you're literally paying less interest than what the current rate of inflation is, which typically means your asset is gonna go up higher than the interest rate you're paying. So you should get as much of that and keep it as much as, as long as possible. That's why no one is selling real estate right now and not no one wants to sell their house because they are locked in at these two and a half, three, three and a half percent interest rates. And now interest rates are five, six percent. No one wants to sell, keep that debt, invest and build wealth. Stop trying to pinch your pennies and pay off every single debt when in three years you could literally build a million dollar net worth, taking that $200,000, investing it and having a cash flowing asset that is appreciating in value.